Today's debate was about the actual verified, quantified impacts of uh, the largest uh, biofuel project to be completed under the Renewable Energy Directive. The debate within Europe has focused a lot on the theoretical uh, advantages and disadvantages that can arise from biofuel investments. Biofuels are a, uh, they're a tool. Uh, they aren't necessarily good or bad. Uh, the way they're done, how that tool is used, where they're placed, uh, these are all important uh, considerations. There are contradictory uh, issues, but also um, supplementary issues. For instance, if looking at the first generation uh, biofuels, which are made of uh, food-based products or crops, then uh, it may have uh, indirect land use change effects, meaning that uh, biofuel uh, resources are taking over food production and it would be counterproductive. Whereas the current technology or new technologies allows to use other sources of biomass, for instance, forest biomass or manure or, or the pieces of plants which are not used for, for food. So technology is uh, changing and it all already now allows uh, new products and, and that's why I it's very clear without no hesitation I can say that um, uh, that bioeconomy in rural area supports sustainable economic growth in Europe. At the moment as a consequence of the EU policy you see that the, the, the bioeconomy is in fact stagnating but definitely there is room for more ethanol plants in different parts of Europe uh, some may argue, well, that this is going at the expense of uh, food production. Uh, but in fact, that's not true because uh, there are lots of areas, arable land is underutilized. There is a yield gap, as it is called, so that capacity can be used for production of feedstocks that can be used for production of uh, ethanol. I think what is very important that we have to distinguish between several types of biofuels, right? Ethanol is one, but and palm oil is another. And they all have different impacts. Oxfam's main point is that uh, this policy has global implications. And when we, dis when we shape this policy, we have to be aware of that and we need to address uh, global impacts. And what we know from the current policy is that promoting food-based biofuels uh, is not helpful in terms of uh, fighting climate change because in many cases, uh, because of indirect land use changes, it increases emissions. It also has, uh, you know, impacts in terms of the livelihoods of people in developing countries. Uh, it poses risks to agricultural commodity markets, potentially driving volatility in times of tight markets, and it increases uh, pressures on land in, in, in countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, and now increasingly in the Amazon, Peru, Colombia, uh, to produce feedstocks for food-based biofuels. The issue uh, uh, is should we going forward looking at 2030 do we want to use large amounts of land to produce crops for energy we think it's not the right policy it's not the right policy to put Europe on the right track to meet its climate commitments it's not the right type of policy to ensure uh, you know sustainable development around the world and in Europe well for me the whole issue is that there just isn't enough demand for the products that European farmers produce at a price that keeps those farmers viable. We need more farms to be more viable to get essential reinvestment. And if you don't have reinvestment in farming, you don't have a future. And if you don't have viable incomes, you don't have the next generation. This is the message we have to get across. Profitability in farming is hugely important. Otherwise, we are storing up problems for the long run. So today's debate was hugely relevant because biofuels aren't going to solve all the problems, but they can make a contribution. At the moment, a six billion contribution and perhaps that could be a bigger contribution of additional income to support the 59 billion we spend on the common agricultural policy.